Oh, we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Lord. And I ask everyone, just put your hands together and give a shout out and a praise to God. For he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Lift your hands up and just say thanks. God, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are in agreement, let me hear you say hallelujah. Good morning, Bridget, for being here. We're going to go and join together on one accord as we magnify our Lord and Savior. We're going to give him all the praise, glory, and honor. We're going to ask him to arise in this place. We brought him in. Hallelujah. We want him to arise. Father, we want you to take your rightful place, Lord God. We, we desire that you be seated upon the throne of our lives, Lord. We bless you. We thank you this morning, oh God. But there's nobody like you. Come on, clap your hands with me this morning. Hallelujah. Let the nations of the earth. Let the people of the earth. Let our living creatures, great and small. Lift one. Let the nations of the earth. Let the people of the earth. Let our living creatures, great and small, stand as one. Lift one.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, we bless you. Hallelujah, and you reign, Father. Hallelujah. We just let you reign.
Lying in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are.
promise us, Lord, life everlasting. And it comes through the blood of Jesus. Being a promise. We thank you for the way maker, Father. And as we come this morning, we recognize, Lord God, you as the promise keeper, Lord, for sending Jesus is from the West. So we thank you for that this morning. Thank you for being a promise keeper. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. that you continue to stand as we reverence God's spirit in this place this morning and that we also reverence an opportunity that he has given us to commune with him. We thank the Lord for this day. The Bible tells us that this is the day that the Lord has made and that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. And so we take an opportunity to recognize the fact that if it had been for the Lord who was on our side, we wouldn't have this opportunity to come together and my, my mic is out. Would not have the opportunity to to commune with the Lord today. So I want to remind us all, uh, as Paul reminds us, I want to uh, go, uh, if you will, uh, let's turn to the book of verse 23. Um as Paul begins to, in detail, remind us why the Lord's Supper was important. And so begins, if we, if we will, let's, let's, let's start there. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23 in the New Living Translation. And I'll begin reading, and you all uh, can catch up to me. Hopefully you have your... Your, your, your Bible with you this morning. Uh, it begins by saying, For I pass on to you, this is verse, verse 23, For I pass on to you, and I'm, again I'm reading out the New Living Translation, uh, I, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drank it. For Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. How many of you know that Jesus is coming again? Yes. Uh, amen. That's what we have. Look, that's what we have to look forward to. Now get it twisted. The Bible teaches us that judgment begins with us in the household of faith. And in the household of household of faith, he's talking about us. So each one of us need to take an, an opportunity to, to examine ourselves. He says, before eating the bread and drinking the cup, for if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon He says, but if we would examine ourselves. See, here's the remedy to sin right now. He, he says, we are to examine ourselves. We would not be judged by God in this way. Yet, we are judged by the Lord. We are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So God says, he says, before we even take this, before we commune with him, the Bible says, examine yourself. And sometimes we can examine ourselves and we may think, you know, ain't nothing wrong. You know, we good. But because he has given us an opportunity to do it anyway, yes. I like to take an opportunity for each 
and every one of us to before we consume this, because we don't want to be in, and in, 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 number one, we don't want to be in, in, we don't want to condemn our own selves. And we don't want to think that we're someplace or in some position or some power. God. Opportunity right come boldly before the throne of grace and say, God, here I am. I know I'm a sinner undone, saved by grace. But, but, but there may be some things that may have happened along the way, but I'm going to come because I want to commune with, with you and I don't want anything to come between you and I. Yes. And so let's take a moment to judge ourselves, to examine ourselves and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you now. Some of us may be broken. Some of us may be uh, uh, feeling useless. Some of us may, may feel like we even came this morning. Holy Spirit, repent of our sins, and we decree and declare now that therefore there is no condemnation to them that live in Christ Jesus, because you have made us And we have confessed our sins to you. You are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And because of the blood of Jesus, our sins now have been thrown into the sea of forgiveness, Father, to be remembered never again. Thank you, Father, for cleaning us, cleansing us, and giving us a new slate, giving us a new beginning. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Thank you, Father. We are in you now. And we stand in your presence. And our heart's desire is to commune with you. We, take, we don't tell that, we took, that he took the bread on the night that Jesus Christ was crucified. He took the bread. And I like to those that may. Whatever you may have in your cupboard, you may have your cabinet, you may not have this, what we have, these condiments, but take something, take the bread, cracker, and consecrate it unto the Lord. It, it, it symbolizes what we're doing today. There's, there's no power in this, this wafer. There's no power in the bread or in the cracker. The power's in the blood. The power's in your belief. The power is in your faith. That's where the power relies says that Jesus took it and he broke it, and he, and he get, but he gave thanks. He said, thank you. For that shall be brought for the world, <laughs> both present and for, and for those to come. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, God, that when Jesus broke the bread, he was thinking of us. Thank you, Father. The Bible says, take ye and eat all of it. And he says, in the same manner, he took the cup. He gave thanks. Father, we thank you for this cup because this represents the blood of Jesus that has been poured out from Jesus' body himself for the remission of our sins. We thank you, Father, that if it wasn't for the blood, oh, Father, where would we be? But God, you sent your son, your only begotten. Recognize him, Father God. God we lift him up high. We, we lift up holy hands in his presence and we say, Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. We don't deserve what you've done for us. But because of the love that you have for the Father, you obeyed him and you died on the cross for us. Thank you for it now. We take. Thank 
all of it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The Bible says that uh, in Matthew chapter 26, that after they, they had supper with Jesus, that they went off and they sang a song as they were on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, so we, we're not going to celebrate that song today, uh, but we do want to move on with our service. But we want to say thank you all for taking an opportunity. And just as we have already prayed, just remember, there is no condemnation that regardless of what may have happened, He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Take your seats as we progress into the service. Good morning. my family. Good morning. Hey man, my name is Sister Kenya Pinnegar and the first thing I would like to do is recognize any first time guests here in the stream if you would. If you're in the building just wave at us. We're not going to embarrass you. I promise we just want to show you a little love and drop a little something in your hand. Yes, come on Bridge family. Woo! We miss Mary. We'll grab. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of our past, Anna Latrilla Nolan, you and welcome you here at Bridge Church of Alabama. If there's anything that we can do for you, let us know. We don't believe that you're here by happenstance. We believe that God directed you here for a reason, and we pray that you get what you came for. Amen? Amen. One more time, Bridge Church. Woo! And if you're tuning in to the live stream for the first time, just drop a heart, drop a wave out there, and let us know you're there. Amen? Amen. All right. I have a few birthdays. This is my 10th. Miss Debbie. July 11th, our own Mama Liz. Woo Hers is July 21st. Our blessed Miss Flo. <laughs> Miss Floretta. All right. Hers is July 30th. So we want to say woo and happy birthday to those July birthdays. We also have one. All right. All right. So we bless that they have a prosperous anniversary and many, many more. Um, it will be here at the church. If you haven't picked up your book, please see Mama Liz. Mama Liz, raise your hand. Amen. Pur please purchase your book from Mama Liz uh, after service, immediately following service today. And we will begin on Chapter 1, so make sure that uh, uh, July, tw July 8th, I keep wanting to say 28th, July 8th. <laughs> All right. Um, and if you have not responded, to the Evite, please, 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 please make sure that you respond to that Evite by Wednesday, correct? Wednesday, so that they can prepare anything that they need to prepare for the uh, meeting. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, the uh, Women of Purpose conference planning team uh, will meet Monday night. July 10th. So if you have been a part or would like to be a part of the uh, planning team, ladies, be at 6.30 p.m. Again, let's make sure um, if you, um, is Marsha in here? Marsha's not here, but if you would see Miss Marsha um, and make sure a standard. <laughs> we know that your conference planning is on the way. It's been going ongoing, I should say. Not forget to mark our calendars for the dates of August 25th through the 27th, and it will be here at the Bridge Church of Alabama. And we are praying and believing God for a miraculous move of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
And the theme is acquiring strength through the storm. So let's get ready for that, man. Make sure you're marking your calendar. Make sure you're getting the information out. Um, and also, ladies, let us prepare to be of support of anything that they need. Amen? Amen. And then and, uh, look out for the registration. Uh, information will be coming soon. And encourage the men to register when it when the link is up. Amen? I believe that it will be live. Changing. Also, uh, just a little how to, uh, when a partner here at Bridge Church of Alabama, at the Bridge Church of Alabama, when we when you partner with us, we partner with you, and together we walk through the journey of life, supporting each other while sharing abroad the love of God. What are the advantages of partnership? Experiencing life events, good and bad, together. Celebrating milestones such as birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, new, honor, new home ownership, etc. Examples, while, we, uh, while all are generally celebrated, partners receive a signed uh, birthday card with a gift card and a shout out. Offering uh, ministerial services such as funeral services and benevolence. Example. While there are general, uh, general ministry-wide giveaways, such as our Thanksgiving baskets, back-to-school bash, etc., benevolence is available to partners only in their time of need. When you volunteer to serve, it's ministry, but, but when you make a commitment to serve with us, it's partnership. Join us in partnership at the Bridge Church of Alabama as we fulfill Ephesians 4, 15 through 16. Amen? All right. Also, just a few little reminders. Let's not forget about Bible study every Wednesday night here in the building as well as Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. Also, our corporate prayer here at the church on our first Saturdays and it begins at standard time. Also, our virtual prayer via Google Meet every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. Let's not forget to continue to check our emails and our text messages, as I um, stated earlier, for any RSVPs that we uh, respond to. All right? All right. And anything that I have mentioned, again, I always say this is not just for um, our partners. This is also for anyone that would like to be a part. Amen. And if you have missed anything that I've mentioned. Good morning, everyone. Actually, I'm not coming to do the offer to a message. I actually wanted to add on to the announcements. This is something that's not given. Uh, it's actually um, something that came up in the last couple of weeks, and I just didn't haven't had time to get it over to um, the admin team. But uh, as you all know, Pastor had been, uh, for the month of June, he had been invited to uh, – actually made a couple of or, or quite a few contacts but one of the contacts we made was with grandma val's lemonade how many of you are familiar with that here locally <laughs> yes have trouble saying that uh, for the ministry that to uh, actually join and be a part of their summer picnic that they're having today has anyone heard about that summer picnic they have today well they having a summer picnic today is from two to six is at the heritage house and it's going to be on the east lawn and they will have lemonade there are quite a few sponsors that they'll have out there today and they're calling it the Summer Picnic. It's going to be from 2 to 6. 
and they actually have tents that uh, are set up to honor him, and that is, is going on today. And uh, I just wanted to let everyone know about that. So if you don't have any plans, if you're not barbecuing today, and uh, if you have some time in your schedule, we would love for you all to just swing by there just to give support. And we actually had some brochures uh, made up that we're going to be passing out. They gave us the opportunity to do that, so we can do that. Um, and also, we wanted to, as part of what God is leading uh, pastor to do, we want to make an an intentional effort to um, just do more things as far as the community is concerned. And out of summer, Richardson has been uh, coming to um, the ministry for, I don't know. perhaps, when you first came. Okay. Uh, this morning, we're going to give her an opportunity to really uh, let us know what her organization is called, InterVarsity. We're going to give her an opportunity just to uh, give us some, uh, some information about organization. She is the campus staff minister uh, over of, of the organization and she's going to come forward this morning and we got a couple of pictures just to give you um, a small insight of, of what they do but she's going to come and just kind of give us, us some information uh, as far as that is concerned. Yes. Thank you. Hey guys. If you know me, you know I am very shy and quiet. Um, I will just sit, you know, <laughs> and smile. Um, but I get really passionate when it comes to talking about God and talking about the ways that God is moving. Um, what? Y'all can hear me right? Okay, good, good, good. So, um, InterVarsity is a college campus ministry. Started a while, while back, before some of y'all were even born. Most of y'all were born, actually, um, truthfully. Um, and now I get a chance to be a part of it. Um, but I think in order to explain what university is, it's probably better that I explain my story just a bit. Um, so I, I remember first coming to Christ. I grew up in the church. And my mom, you know, she made me, if she going to church, I'm going to church. That's kind of how I grew up in. But I never actually believe like okay mama said and right before i got to college became a Christian. And I remember the moment that I first experienced Christ. Incredible moment, feeling God's love and understanding what it was. It was just overwhelming. And I remember saying to God, man, like if only people knew what I just figured out. If only people knew the scripture that you have been revealing to me. And I said to God, God, I wouldn't mind spending the rest of my life explaining what your scripture means. Little did I know that was, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't for real, God. Um, but God took me at found out she was about and um the first place I felt safe to questions about what it was 
first place I saw people who were my age lifting up their hands and crying to God. It was the first place I learned what it meant to love my neighbor as myself, even if I really don't like my neighbor. What does it mean to love past all of the anxiousness and all of the aggravation? It was the first place I learned how to do a lot. And so fast forward, God gave me the opportunity to come on staff. And like she said, now I'm on staff at Auburn. And of three months, <laughs> three months, we've seen that. It has been so significant and impactful. And I could keep on sharing like numbers like, oh, we've seen this and this and that. But I feel like what's probably most impactful is to share specifically how those numbers have come into Like, what is with those students who are my first picture? Okay. Could you go to the other one? And if not, it's okay. Thank you. So this picture is from a conference that we call Remix. Remix was created by... A couple of staff, um, a couple of black staff, a part of InterVarsity, because they realized there was a couple of things. So the students that they were working with who were black were experiencing tension in their identity as black people. One, not loving themselves, and two, not knowing if God really loved them. And so they say, you know what, we need to do something to help these black college students. So they created Remix. And Remix tagline is unapologetically black and unashamedly Christian. And during those conferences, we have black leaders come up. Um, we have this incredible worship team. We have open mic night. We have all this incredible stuff. And during the second day of the conference, we that's when we usually have open mic night. Well, one of the students in that picture, I'm not going to call out who she is, but I met her last September and I heard her sing. I was like, oh, my God, your voice is beautiful. It's obviously a gift. And she's like, yeah, yeah. I said, well, you need to like use it. And she said, I would never. She said, if God called me to use my voice to sing, I would pass out. <laughs> she said, that's something I would never do. And so I met with her every week outside of Bible study, and I prayed with her, and I talked with her. And during the week of remix, she was like, Summer, I think I need to sign up for the open mic. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, so what you going to do? And she said, I'm going to sing. Okay, well, let's do it then. And so she, I practiced with her. She got up there to sing, and she was so nervous. But, y'all, she ended up singing this song to God, and it led me to tears, and it led most of everyone else to shouting. And I was like, look at that. That is ways that God is moving. And then fast forward, you can now go to the second picture. Fast forward, the fire continues, and students are like, man, we really want to pray on campus. So late at night, it is like around 9.30, seriously, late at night, here we are walking across almost the entire Tuskegee campus praying. Student-led prayer late at night on campus, praying and singing songs to God. And as we we're walking past one of the dorms, we walked past this friend group. They were smoking and drinking and, you know, doing what they do. Doing what they do, you know. And um, this one girl she, from the friend group, she stops. And she's like, what are they doing? I hear her say, what are they doing? And she yells, what are y'all doing? So the student who was with me, well, one of the students goes, oh, we're just praying. <laughs> <laughs> and so she's like, can I join? And we're like, yeah, yeah, come on. She was like, uh. So she turns to her friends, and they're like, you really about to leave us? She's like, yeah, I mean. <laughs> and so she joins us for a little bit, and she asks a bunch of questions. She's like, well, what's your And so we got our information. And y'all, that student has brought more people to the ministry than any other member. Any other member. God is really moving. And it's a blessing that I get a chance to see it. And it's a blessing to have you all praying for me, for the ways that you all check in on me, because being a minister is hard. <laughs> but it's such a blessing to be able to have community surrounding me as I see students be transformed by Christ. So um, I 
ask that you all continue to pray for me. Continue to pray for the students. Um, and if you ever want to know how, I guess I didn't even explain what we do, huh? <laughs> so um, along with being a ministry on campus, so along with the small groups and Bible studies and the conferences, we volunteer in the community. Um, we volunteer um, at Tuskegee Elementary Schools um, and sometimes at the food bank as well. Um, we help raise up scholarships for students in need. Um, we have global trips where we go out and learn. But it's it's an incredible place to invest in and pray in. So if you're ever interested in figuring out how you can invest in us, how you can pray for us, how you can here with us, please let me know. Y'all know I'm right there. Um, I will stick around. And yeah, I'm willing to answer any questions that you all have at the end of service. But thank you guys for the opportunity to share. That uh, each minister is responsible for our fundraising and uh, ra raising the donations that go towards the different conferences and the different things that they uh, plan to do throughout the year. And it also encompasses uh, her salary is rolled into that. And uh, we just want everyone to, uh, if it's, we there is a link, there is a way that you can give. And maybe if she can write that down. And if anyone is interested, if you don't want to do it today or, you know, just throughout your, if, where, whenever God may lead, then you can do that as well. Amen. Amen. And uh, I know that as a ministry that we have uh, decided that we will um, partner with her and, and begin to, um, you know, to, to do something as well. Amen. Yeah. So, so let me say my piece. Yeah, I need this. Yeah, yeah, I need this. No, where you going? Don't go nowhere. I went to, so I, I wanted to talk about my experience with the group. Uh, the first time um, Summer came through, you know, we met her here at the church, and she was telling us about uh, what, you know, just a little bit about what was going on. I, ha I have never heard of InterVarsity before. And so she invited us to campus Bible study one evening. And I may have shared it with some of you uh, uh, on my return, I think a week or so after I went over there. I went over there not knowing what to expect. And I walk into this room and uh, Summer and Terrence was there doing a, a Bible study presentation. And when I walked in, I thought I was gonna come in and see about you know four or five students. You know, campus past, I mean campus, um, environment, you don't expect you see, you know, but so many people, because, you know, they shame, it ain't cool to be a Christian. I walked in that room, and the entire room was filled, mm -hmm. I don't know, 20, 30 students mm -hmm. in there, yeah. not as to see what we could do to bring this to the university, and she was already there doing it. And not only were they there, but they did like we used to do on Wednesday nice Bible study. She had food. You know, they fed the students. They were able to eat. I think we had tacos at night. <laughs> Good tacos, too. I mean, they had everything there. I say all that to say that when we talk about outreach and we talk about what we're able to do as a church, it's not, we, and we always talk about, you know, our logo, you know, church outside the walls, you know, going outside the walls. And then when God presents us with an opportunity to go outside the wall, we can't get scared. Let me say it so you may understand. You can't get scared. You can't, you can't get scared of what God is calling us to do as a ministry. I, and I said this a long time ago, that if we didn't make it whatever it is that you wanted to be, I'm leaving so y'all can have the building. Because I'm here to do what God has called us to do in this community. And so now we've known some summer. Has it been a year? Yeah, we just talked about that. About a year, and 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 her not only what she's doing is significant, and in the community has a lot to do with what we're supposed to be doing in our, with our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just encourage you. And again, uh, her website is uh, uh, give dot Is it www right? Yeah. yeah. If you're taking notes, and, and unless you got a, a, a great memory. Take some notes and uh, www.give.info.
Intervarsity, that's one word, intervarsity, I-N-T-E-R-V-A-R-S-I-T-Y dot org, O-R-G. And I'm, I, I'm personally going to be sewn into this ministry. We're doing it as a, as a, as a, um, a uh, community um, church, community. We're, we're going to, because, I mean, to see young people get saved. Amen. To see anybody get saved yeah. is, is a miracle in itself. Amen. But now, and nowadays in 2023, to see young people yeah. want to love the Lord and want to get saved, want to give their life to Christ. And of course, and they're still trying to find themselves. Mm-hmm. Who, who's not? Right. Amen. At 80 years old, still trying to find themselves. Amen. 61, mm-hmm. still trying to figure out, you know, how to do this thing. But our responsibility, the Bible tells us that our responsibility is, is to, to, to pour into into them and um and so i just wanted to wanted to share that with you now you gave the website now do they need to go do you have your own you have to yeah. go to her page oh yeah. that's why so i was you yeah just search my name on the website mm-hmm. summer richardson um spelled like the c's and s-e-n-n-e-r and then mm-hmm. richardson r-i-c-h-e-r-d-s-o-n um if you just search that i'll pop up and you can get it right here amen amen, amen. all right let god spank you or let him bless you, you know. So that's, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, and, and it's just, uh, uh, I don't know what well, we're getting ready to do. What? We're getting ready to do, we're getting ready to do the offertory message. Amen. Is that timing perfect? Amen. Amen. Yeah, transition, bro. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. You know, guys, it's all about kingdom business. Yes. That's what it is. God is interested in his kingdom, and that's what we should be all about is kingdom business. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where. It's all about his kingdom. That's what he's concerned about. And so uh, that really blessed me this morning, Summer. Um, Tuskegee University is my alma mater. I haven't been back there in years, but uh, that really blessed me. And um, this morning, uh, I'm before you to give an offer to your message and to try to encourage you to just give into the kingdom of God. It's like I said, it's all about kingdom. And he's working through anyone that avails themselves. And so I really was touched by that testimony this morning, Summers. Okay, this morning I'm going to talk about investing. You know, we all want to invest. And let us look at Matthew's chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 19 through 21 in the New International Version. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21 in the NIV Version. It reads, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, moth, and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, thieves break in and steal. Your treasure is, your heart will be And I read that uh, verse of scripture in a different translation. And I don't know if we have that or not, but I have it written here. And I want to just read it from this translation. 
and it says, Do not keep hoarding for yourselves earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually will rust, decay, and lose its value. Heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. Always pursue. We want to stop and think about that. Where is your heart? What is it that your heart is pursuing? Whatever it is that you're running after, we sing that song all the time. I'm chasing after God. I'm chasing after you no matter what I'm chasing after you. But what are you really chasing after? Just stop and think about that. Wherever, whatever you pursue, whatever your heart think is your treasure, that's what you're going to pursue. Are you absolutely nothing wrong with that? We need to plan ahead for things such as that, but we must be weary of investing our resources and our attention in fly-by-night, get-rich schemes. You know, there are times when we see stuff where if you invest this, then you can have this by tomorrow. Yeah. People running after the lottery, trying to have won millions of dollars in the lottery. And just a few years after that, they don't have anything to show for it. I mean, they invested in things that are not lasting. And God wants us to invest in his kingdom. That is the one thing that is guaranteed. That's the only promise guaranteed that I know. That's the only thing that is 100% guaranteed not to fail. Your investment will not fail when you invest in the kingdom of God. And I just want to say that um, personally, I can testify to the fact of what God has done in my life just by three kids. And there have been times when just out of nowhere, uh, this person came to my house. She was an elderly woman at the time, and I used to kind of help, help her around. And she said, I would like for you to come and go with me to the grocery store. I need some groceries, so could you take me to the grocery store? And we went to the store, and she bought buggy full of groceries. We need this, we need that. Your kids. Never told her what I needed. Never go around mumbling and complaining about I need this. But she blessed me. That was God. God did that. Amen. That was God. And it's because I invested in God's kingdom. I didn't stop and think about, okay, I've got to pay my rent. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And then what's left, I can give that to God. No, that was not my attitude. I gave that off the top first. And God always, every month, it seemed like I had more bills than I had money. But at the end of every month, everything was taken care of. And that's because of God. And God is not a respecter of person. What he's done for one, he'll do it for the other. So I would just like to encourage you. The word of God says, try me. Try me and see when I open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you'll not have room enough to receive it. And God made, uh, you know, I made a promise to God. I vowed out to God that I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to do whatever it is in my heart that I feel like you're telling me to do, whether I understand it or not. And I've done that, and I can honestly say that I am living in and reaping the harvest of all the seeds that I've planted, no matter how small they may have been. Harvest. Thank God for that. And if he did it for me, I promise you he'll do it for you. And look at what he's doing through young people at college campuses now. And he's to, for the kingdom of God to prosper. It takes our finances as well. So don't be weary. Don't think that this is not going to work. It's going to work, guys. 
because I'm living proof that it, it works. And there are so many in here now is living proof that doing it God's way is the best way. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with that in mind, I would like for you to just take a few moments and just think about how important it is to invest in the kingdom of God. Don't waste your money because God gave it to us. It's not ours. We are stewards over everything that we have. And we want to be found faithful with that which God has given us. So just take a moment before you do that and just think about it. Think about how to invest. Here at the Bridge Church, we have several ways to give. You can text your donation amount. And before we give, let's pray. Father, we come to you now this morning in the name of your precious son, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have given us. We thank you, Father God, that you did not leave us to try to figure this out, but it is that you would have us to do. We thank you, Father God, that when we give into your kingdom, that that is an investment that will last. In Jesus' name, amen. stand against the Lord. No one can, no one will. Who will stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 the victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs to him. Who will stand? Who will stand against the Lord? Nobody can. No one can. And no one will. No Who will stand? Who belongs to Jesus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, the victory belongs to Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. The victory belongs. 
like God. The, the victory belongs to you, Father. We thank you this morning. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Again, good morning once again, everyone. I'm, uh, please bear with us. We're praying that uh, things will work out, uh, especially now that God's about to, you know, speak, uh, speak today. I really believe that the Lord has given us a word in season, in this time, and in the, uh, of necessity to take an opportunity to recognize our guests that are here today. Amen. Uh, Elder Bishop, thank you so much for coming. And I don't know if we have any other, any other guests that's here. Of course, I, I, I say guests, but of course, so you know your family and your lovely wife, you all are family. So thank God for you all coming. Uh, uh, man and woman of their word, you said you will come and be visiting us. And so thank God for you. We pray that whatever the Lord has in store for you today, you do not walk out of here empty handed. I'm praying. My desire is that your cup overflow. Amen. Overflow. 
Amen. And for all of you that are coming here, of, um, and, and uh, just because, you know, I have to be honest with you, you know, my thought every time there's a major holiday, you know, right before Sunday or a major holiday before Sunday service, I never know what to expect. You know, you never know. People are traveling and things like that. And so I, I'm really, you know, I'm grateful for all of you coming and, and, and seeing that this is uh, something that you desire to do on a Sunday in between the holidays. So thank you so much for coming. I know you didn't do it for me. Uh, prayerfully, you did it, you know, number one, because you love Jesus. And number two, because you love Jesus. And if there's a number three, you did it because you know you need Jesus. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm not going to keep it long. I've been awesome in August. Awesome in August. Man, we need to, we need to uh, pin that. Awesome in August. Um, God is doing some things, man. I, I, I'm just, I'm getting excited. And everyone I share uh, the vision with, they get excited with us. And so uh, it's going to be a fine time in the Lord. Um, uh, this is no competition, ladies. You know, I know you all do our thing, you know. Two years, but the men about to blow this thing up. Y'all, they like, yeah, yeah. But we need your help to do it, though. <laughs> Who was it? Was it James Brown? Says, man, where? But it'd be nothing without a woman. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? God what he was doing. And so we thank the Lord for, amen. Thank God for everything that has happened thus far in today's service. I want to get go, go forth and, and, and go before the Lord so we, the Lord may speak. Heavenly Father, we thank you just for this wonderful opportunity to, to be before your people. We praise you. We love you, Father, and we thank you for all that you're going to do today. We pray for the hearers of your word and not doers only, that, Father, that they're uh, not just hearers of the word, but, but those that are doers of your word as well. We pray for them, God. We pray that you're giving them increase in every area, every area of their life, Father, that will uh, make them better, that will uh, uh, encourage them to do better. And so we thank you for your word today, God. It is life. It is life for us, Lord. Your word is bread. It is, it is refreshing, and we thank you for it today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so as I said earlier today, we were talking with, with Summer, and our relationship has just been a, a very good relationship. And I'm just so amazed at what she's been doing over uh, you know, her course. Uh, uh, I don't want to say a course of her life, but it seems like it's been a lifetime endeavor God knew exactly what he was doing when he birthed her into this world. And so, yeah, I can really say that what God has been doing in her life because he already orchestrated her life before she was even in her mother's womb. And so it was a wonderful thing. And so um, I just wish that there was some things like that when I was younger, you know, in, in college or in, in the military or whatever the case may be. But, you know, they, they, we, we, I think we had to grow to know the generation of the day, then really not ashamed of anything. And so I'm, I'm loving it. Though they may not be ashamed of anything else, it's good that they're not ashamed of Jesus Christ as well. And I love that. What I love, though, see, this is the thing about young people, that if it don't work, they ain't going to play with it. They ain't going to mess with it. They're not going to stick with it. If it don't work, if it doesn't do anything for them, they're going to move on to something else, that, something else that does. So I praise God that whatever your ministry is, is working life, but I never had a relationship with him. And so that leads me to the next thing in terms of just our faith in Christ, you know, just building enough, enough in us, enough belief in us, enough faith in us to believe who Jesus is, that he is who he say it is. Um, let's go to Hebrews, but I didn't give you my scriptures today, but that's all right. I'm going to be patient. Hebrews chapter, most of you have been to church for a little bit, a little while. You are familiar with this scripture, Matthew, I mean, Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm going to be coming out of the New King James Version. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, in the New King James Version. Of course, normally we would go into Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, but you all probably know that one by heart, too, that faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I want to go into Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. This one, to me, is, so, is also vitally important. It says, but without faith, 
It is impossible. What does impossible mean? Can't be done. It's impossible. Man, have you ever seen something that, that's just impossible to do? Now, this is the thing. Our life, we always, as we walk into this, this Christian walk, we're always talking about what is possible. But here, Paul says is this. I mean, Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews says this, that without faith, it's impossible to please God, to please him. He's talking about God. It's impossible to please God. God asked a question. Jesus asked the question, is there anything too hard for God? You know, someone asked that question, is there anything too hard for God? No, there's nothing too hard for God, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. So that may be, it may not be too hard for God to do anything, but it's going to be hard for us to do anything. It's impossible for us to do this particular thing, which is to please him. He says, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a rewarder of those who have made up their mind that I'm going to seek God's face. Not only am I going to seek his face, but that even God himself is going to be pleased with it. You, some people I've heard before, like, what, are you, what can you give a God who has everything, who has Power, all power in his hands, who's an awesome God. He is the great I am that I am. What, what can you give God? What can you render back into the Lord who has already, who has everything and everything that we have belong to him, anything? So what can we give back to him? The Bible says that we can give him, we can, we can give him some faith. We can give him our faith. We can give him our faith. What I love about it, though, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Well, you only have to go there, but you can put it up there on the board. Uh, Romans, chapter, chapter, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible tells us that God has given every one of us a measure of faith. He's given us a measure of faith, which means we start off with a head start. You don't even have to develop it on your own. He gives each and every one of us a measure of faith. So we start off with a measure of faith that already gives us the ability to please God. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly, continue, than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God. Here it is right here. As God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. He's given each with a head start. Which means you don't try to try to muster up some faith. He's already given it to you. My question today is, what type of faith have you? Because really, when he's given us a measure of faith, to me, when I think about that, a measure of faith is just like a seed. It's just he's just giving you a seed. And what's in the seed? Potential. So he's given us a measure of faith. He's given us a seed. Man, I like them shoes, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Look. And you gonna sit on the front row, man, and do me like that? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Took me too long to get here, bro. And he's given each and every one of us a seed, a measure of faith. And in that seed, remember, a seed holds the potential of being anything that it needs to be, whatever it was created to be. So if God given us a measure of faith or a seed of faith, he's given us the potential to call whatever it is that whatever we believe in for, it, it can come into existence. A measure of faith, a seed of faith. He's given it to us. My question again, though, is what have you done with the measure of faith that God has given you? Or what are you doing with the measure of faith that God has given you? Or even so, what type of faith do you have? What type of faith do you have? Well, I was reading the James, and James began to talk about three types of faith. And, and he, he started off talking about, in fact, let's go there, sir. Let's go to James chapter James chapter 2, and I want to begin with the 14th verse. James chapter 2, and, um, again, this, this relates to something we've already spoke about earlier today. James chapter 2, verse 14. It says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters? So uh, whenever he's talking to brothers and sisters, he's talking to us. Well, let me say this. He's talking to those that have given their life to Christ. He's talking to the body of Christ. So he's talking to us. He says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm. Eat well. 
And I like to add, God loves you. I'm praying for you. You know, all those religious things that we like to say. The Bible goes on and says, but then you don't give that person any food or any or, or clothing. He said, what good does that do? Verse 17 says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. He says, unless it produces good deeds, it's dead and useless. He says that that, that type of faith is dead faith. The, the, the type of dead faith, that type of faith that says, I believe God. I believe he's able to do this and he's able to do that. I'm blessed to be a blessing in the moment that you are blessed to be a blessing to be able to bless. You said, I ain't got it. I can't do it. It's not in me. Have a good day. I'm praying for you. That's dead faith. James is saying, he said, faith without works is dead. And in other words, he's saying that there are some, some ways or some, there, there should be some fruit behind what you're saying you believe. There should be some evidence. I like to go on and read when I went on to read this and God began to speak to me. And it's more than just tangible, doing tangible things. It's about the, the life you live. Your life should be an example and people should be able to see what you what what kind of faith you have. Your life determines the, 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 the measure of faith or how 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 did that 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 measure of faith that God gave you. How did it grow? What, what's what's happening with it? But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? He says, I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, but you believe that there is one God. I'm going to stop there before I even go any further. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's beginning to talk about the faith. He says, let me back up even further. Because I, 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 I don't want anyone to miss Construe what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The Spirit of the Lord is not saying that every time someone comes to you and need help, that if you, if, you, if you don't help them, you're not operating in faith. You don't have any faith. Because really, in all actuality, in, in all humanity, we can't help everybody. So we don't have the ability to help everybody. So there, there are some, some certain things that you have to decide when it comes time to help somebody. You have to really make a decision on, on, on how you want to help them. I, I, I did this. Man, let, me, let, me, let me share with you. Here, here's five, five things to determine. Maybe, and, I, and I, I'll ask that you even consider speaking or, 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 or having a conversation with the Holy Spirit as you consider these things. Uh, how do I determine whether or not I should help someone or not, or whether or not, it's a, whether or not I'm operating in dead faith or whether or not I'm operating in, in, in a genuine faith? Number one, the best thing to do is decide on who you can help because you can't help everybody. So decide who you can help. Uh, uh, in other words, it is, human, it, it is humanly impossible for you to help everyone who has a need. So pray about it and let the Lord lead you in terms of who you can help and who you may not be able to help. Because you can't help everybody, and you may have a heart to want to, but you can't help everybody. So this is why the, the Holy Spirit living inside of you is so important. Because when you don't know what to do, he does. He already knows. And I, I, as I was sharing with some of you a couple of weeks ago, that, that one of the things that I do every morning before I leave out the house or while I'm in, in my car headed to my destination, my prayer is, Lord, help me make the decisions that, that I need to make. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Give me the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge to make decisions not that, that, will, that will benefit me so I don't move out of emotions and I don't move out of, out of, out of just bad information. And so I have to pray and seek the Lord. Who am I going to help today? If you don't know who or you don't know what person, the Holy Spirit will tell you. Uh, 